In this video, we will be assembling 30 Sonobe units into a concave icosahedron. Oh, it's 11 at my house. And I came up with this uh, when I was just experimenting. I thought, what if you inverted the folds when you put the units together? And sure enough, it works great. You can also do it on the 12 piece, the octahedron, but I don't recommend that because you can actually do the same thing with fewer units that aren't Sonobe. So, you know, that's why we're doing this one. So most of them are wrong, so please ignore all the ones that aren't flat. So I will show you now how to uh, do it correctly. So what we're going to do is we're going to flip it so that the white side is facing you. Then we're going to fold it in half so that it looks like little fox ears, like that. Right, little fox ears, and then we're going to bring the front fox ear down like this. There we go, and then flip it over and bring the fox ear down in the same way. There we go, and then open it back up. So you can see that now all of the internal pockets and stuff are actually inside, so the whole unit is now upside down and kind of reversed. So I'll do this a couple more times and then I'll do uh, the magic of jump cut. So again, you're gonna flip your unit onto the flat side and you're gonna fold it in half so that it looks like little fox ears, like that. And you're gonna bring the front ear down like this. And flip it over and do the same thing on this side, bring this down. Okay, and then partially open it back up. And there we go. And then I will do one more and then I'll jump cut. So again, flat side, fold it in half. So you make little fox ears. Oh, this one's giving me a little bit of a hard time. Come on, there we go. Okay, and then bring this tip down. Like this. And then rotate it and bring this tip down like this. Okay, so now we're gonna use the magic of a jump cut. Alrighty, now that all the units are properly folded, we can begin assembly. Uh, the assembly is technically the same as a regular stellated icosahedron, except obviously the points will be interior instead of exterior. So what you'll do is here's your flap, the pocket is right here, so you're gonna bring the flap and put it in the pocket. And we're gonna put them together in groups of three, which is our point. And then each of them is a group of five points, which you'll see in a moment here. So same thing, put a little closer, say flap in pocket and flap in pocket. So you can see if this was, and I kind of, I'll kind of bounce this around. So looks like that. So you can see the regular point is now on the inside. So now let's make another. There we go. There, see there's the flap, there's the pocket, and we will stick it in like this. And then we need one more to complete our next point. There we go. There we go, now we have two of them. So we'll need three more to complete our first group of five. So there's our pocket, there's our flap, stick it in there. And there is our pocket, and there is our flap and pocket again. There we go. So yeah, you kind of have to pay more attention, I think, to this than you do the other one, just because this feels like it wants to fall apart, even though it's still fairly stable with all of their little flaps and pockets. Okay, so now we are up to a group of four. So that means that these two are gonna come together to help us create our group of, our first group of five points. So there we go, I, I put the flap in the pocket. And now I took the last piece that we need for our group of three and I put it in there. There we go. And now we have our first group of five. 
So you can see the texture is really nifty. I like it. It's really cool looking. And you'll be able to actually see the original icosahedron shape as opposed to just seeing it in its stellated form, which is also really fun. Oh, my little dog was sitting outside in the sun because it's a sunny December day here. And now she's thirsty. So you get to listen to her drink water for a moment. So now we have a group of three and a group of three. So we'll have to finish those off here. There we go, we have a group of, now we have one, two, three, four. So now we have to put together our group of five here. There we go. Just like that. So now we have, I think that's two full groups of five and a couple groups of three. So we'll just keep going here. Yeah, this feels kind of precarious, but I think that's just the nature of the inverted units. So now we have one, two, three, four, and we have to put these two together. We need one more. I'm trying to keep my fingers out of the way so that you can kind of see what's going on. And there we go, we have our next group of five. So yeah, you can see all the little points are kind of crunched into the middle here. So let's keep going. Okay. Here we go. We have one, two, three, four. So then these need to come together to create a group of five and then we need one more there we go so you can see we're most of the way there now we have a ton of groups of three so we just have to keep building on those can also see though that we're running out of pieces, but that just means that we're most of the way to being finished here. Oh, come on, all right, there we go. So now you can see this, one, two, three, four. Gotta put this together. And then we have a group of our next group of five. And now we have one, two, three, four right here so that we can put these two to create another group of five. Okay, so that's a group of three. Still got mostly groups of three here. However, this because of where we are, we'll create a group of four in two places. Or it should anyway, because we're running out of pieces here. And these two, these three do not want to fit. To, there we go. Oh, see, like I say, these are kind of, these are a bit more precarious. So you got to be very careful in putting them together and monitor them so that they don't fall apart. I don't make this very often, <laughs> and this is kind of why. It looks really cool, but it, you have to be, but it's really fiddly. And I know about fiddly, I'm a violinist. Ha 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 ha, okay. Go, one, two, three, four. Oh, come on, there we go.
Is our next yeah and it looks like yep these two go together because we need one piece you know how I say the final piece is the hardest it's even harder when everything's concave <laughs> as you're about to see look at that it's just all up on top of itself so I have to kind of push the flaps out of the way so I can put the final piece in and now I can no longer kind of, it's harder to hold too, to get all the little, ah! Yeah, and of course now it's gonna just kind of pop open a little bit, but that's okay, it's easy to fix. Oh dear. There we go, so now you kind of have to monitor what, what's falling apart where, but now I'm gonna combine the final three pieces. There we go. Kind of haphazardly, but yeah, so now this one you really have to kind of mush in your hand to get it to, to stick, as it were, the power of friction, but there you go. Now you have this lovely concave icosahedron, so you can actually see all of the sides. You can actually see what shape you've made. Hooray. Yeah, this is pretty fragile, so you'll have to be careful where you set it. But there you go. If it doesn't look exactly like mine, that's okay. It might even look better, who knows? And if this is your first time making this, I'm sure it looks great for your first time. And as always, thank you so much for joining me.